Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So you've asked for it and I'm giving it to you. We're having a drawing tutorial on how to make some simple botanicals. And then I talk about how you can create it into a composition like this. And I talk about how you can do it with pencil and ink and even color in a wash with watercolor. Um, this is just simple steps in order to get you on your journey of creating your own designs and drawing simple flowers like a lily and a daisy, a poppy, things like that, or some ditzy flowers like this. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Do you struggle to draw? I mean, a lot of people do in the beginning if they're starting to create. And my, my biggest suggestion I always say to everyone is just keep doing it. The more you draw, the better you'll get. And the more you look at nature and study it and the drawing it, then the better you'll get at creating beautiful botanicals on your own. So without further ado, let's get creating by drawing some botanicals. Okay, for this video, we're going to begin to start to draw some flowers and creating your own composition. You just have to just figure out how to make flowers instead of going from a typical daisy with a circle and your little daisies petals going like this. You have to think about how the flower naturally, you know, looks in nature, how it bends, how it moves. Some flowers do go straight on like a sunflower, but most of them, I printed out some pictures of flowers that I liked. You can see how this poppy is kind of leaning and this one's kind of leaning. So how you would draw something like that. You have to think of like basically the perspective of a flower. You know, there's a perspective of a building, and landscape, there's also a perspective of a flower. Some flowers can be head on. So you have a circle right here and your center stamen, and then you have your outer petals, right? But then the circle, if it's on, it's like looking upward and you're kind of looking straight on and it's looking upward, it's not facing you. Think of it as an oval shape, right? Start with that instead of the circle shape. And then you have your center here, kind of off center kind of going towards the top. And then from there, you kind of go in and make your little petals. This would be just an example of a daisy. And they would kind of curve down a little bit and they would get much shorter on the background here. And vice versa, you can do it where you have the oval and then the center is kind of like here. It's foreshortened here and it's longer here. See how that works? And then if the petal is facing where you see some petals and you see the back end of them. So here you have the oval, but then you want to cut in like that, right? So here's the center of the daisy. And what you're seeing on the outside here is the, the ones that are flipped up, right? They're flipped up. These ones are fine. And those ones are flipped up. So let me show that again. Here's the oval again do like a whole line that kind of cuts it and then you do your center. So there's your center of your daisy and you're doing the little leg, little legs. <laughs> and also don't keep them all so close together, kind of spread them out and kind of bend them a little bit. And then here you'll have them kind of coming up. You see that? And then so the same thing this way, you just flip it the other way, you maybe go like sideways this way, and here's the center on the side. And these are foreshortened right here, and these are a little bit longer. So they look a little more natural. So now you get them up and down all around. And that goes true with any flower. Um, so those were poppies. So we have to put the poppies kind of here. They have those little stamens around the center, but bigger, wider petals kind of overlapping and then they have like little bridges right um, I, I picked out a lily so that's a little different it doesn't have a center like this like a like a poppy or a daisy you know roses don't have it ranculus don't have it they just have the stamens in the middle and they kind of overlap. You see how they're kind of going this way. This the petal is bent down. So it's think of it as a star, but see how it's going that way. So 
So for the lily, since my original video, video got cut out, I'm redrawing it again so you can see it and putting it in, editing it back in. So they look like little stars basically. And some go head on and some go, do not. So I would think dissect this by making like V's. So here's the lily, here's the stamen kind of coming out. Like almost like a sprigs of grass. But then from here, do like a little oval, right? So you figure this is kind of the center. And then I'm going to have a line kind of down and wiggle kind of back and bringing another one here, almost like stars, right? Drawing like a star, kind of wiggling back here, but a wiggled star. And then here, I have it going like this, and this is kind of where this particular petal will go. And then kind of back here, like a star. And then you have your lily, right? Head on, kind of similar. I will do like an old teeny circle here and then kind of come out like this and then have the stars. I think I show you this one coming up that doesn't get cut out. I think of a star in a way. And then you have those little kind of roundish rectangular kind of stamens kind of coming out here. And there you go. And then the lines. And so if it's a stargazing lily, they have a little of those little dots. But stars. And then this one, if you see this one, it's not it's kind of like the same premise where you don't see the center. There's no real center like like a daisy would have, or so you would go like this in a V kind of situation. And here's the stem coming down here. And these kind of wiggle on a little half one and half one. And then they were going out, out, like that. And the stamens come out like this. It's like a flower coming out like that. And then one that's kind of almost opening up. So it's the ones that don't open up are kind of like an oval. And the ones that are kind of opening up, it's an oval, kind of a little bit open like that. So think of this as a V and you're just making these like a, like a leaf basically. Like, you know, it's still like V, there's the stem, but there's a petal right here in the front. So you kind of kind of up a V here and kind of wiggle that V. And then you have these other ones in the back. And they have that. So that's the lily. So these are perspective of the flower, right? And once you get down the perspective, and then some of them, you won't even see the center at all. Like this poppy, you don't even see it. So that's kind of like a U. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I have a line connecting down. And then a couple of wiggles here, kind of like a tulip. And then you have the stem of the flower. And they have these little funky, uh, their leaves are kind of, mm, I don't know how to describe them. They're kind of pointy like that, like dragon leaves, I guess. And then you just put little lines indicating that it's a poppy, kind of going like that, bending. And it can be totally bent upside down. So an upside down U and wiggle, wiggle the lines, pull them in. You get those lines. Now, another thing about drawing, let's go change the page, is if you just want to do everything in pencil. Actually, I'm going to flip this over here. So we've got the, the drawing down of the daisy, like a poppy, a lily, right? And whatever flower, maybe, um, oh, I don't know, like, could be uh, small little ditzy flowers. Little ditzy flowers are just like four petal flowers. Let me show that again. One, two, three, four, and you do a cluster of them. And then you can kind of put them on a branch. Get them smaller as they go to the top here and have some that don't even, that aren't even open like little buds. And bring it down and then you can just make up some leaves. So how you make it look instead of juvenile and a little more sophisticated is by adding some extra line some, and some shading. So now you've kind of drawn the basic shape of a daisy or, a, or even a lily or even a poppy. We'll get a little more sophisticated. So now we're going to draw that circle again. 
and here's a bigger circle remember that so we're going to draw those little daisy petals it helps to draw the circle so you get a little bit more sophisticated and you bring down the stem daisy leaves are kind of like a wiggle 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 leaf kind of like those oak leaves so it's like and see how I bent it kind of curving coming down and you get the, the line which is the the vein there so it's still kind of like a goofy and I'm gonna get rid of that circle go back in here and draw those little petals so it's just basically a line a bump bump line bump bump you kind of don't put them so close together and you can have some overlapping too so once you have that done this is where the fun part comes if you're using just a pencil I kind of like you want to have your hand kind of going like this on the side the shading very light touch light shading press down harder on your pen pencil darker shading right this is how you do shading with pencil and then for the petals you do some little lines coming out see just little lines gets more sophisticated and those lines could be darker going towards the center axis and now you have a more sophisticated looking flower and then of course the stem here you drew that but you need some shading as so you put the little dark pencil in there voila now when I do the pen and ink same premise I have the circle I'm using a sharpie ultra fine point do the little doodads I call them doodads but they're basically <laughs> petals and have the bigger ones kind of here and here's the stem and the leaf and I'll do the vein so same thing do those lines now you can get even more sophisticated with your little ink lines I'm just gonna go in and do I'm oh, sorry didn't show you that little dashes kind of coming in here same thing and then you can kind of fill in down the bottom to get a little bit darker maybe mine got a little too dark but you see what I'm saying dashes and then same thing with this see how I'm going I'm just taking the lines and going outward from the center a little bit kind of going on top of each other so the line here's the petal lines but then add a couple more lines and then it gets darker see and then a couple of lines on here and just do a couple of little teeny dashes on the petals you don't have to get crazy you can do teeny little dashes on the side of the stem now this is a little bit thicker than this is a fine point sharpie add a little you can get even more sophisticated with like a micron pen I'm not sure if I have a micron pen I think I did but it's probably gone away but you see how the difference of the two the pencil and then the ink right and then there are ways to do it with the ink without filling all this in same thing with the pencil you have your center right and you're drawing you're not actually drawing every little line you're kind of breaking the line this breaks see you're indicating those petals but you're not really going full tilt so this is kind of like what you would use if you're doing some watercolor I'm gonna fill it in you're just kind of like missing the whole entire part of the flower it just has a nice little simple look to it and then you can go in and wash and color around it and then same thing like okay so you just have that pencil but maybe it'd be better if you add ink in it and see how I'm breaking up the line you know those leaves are there but I don't have I don't I didn't draw completely the whole entire petal 
I kind of broke it up. A little more stylized. Didn't do our completely the leaf. And this will help your watercolor also. This paper is not meant for watercolor, but let's put it in to show you how it look if you did add it. You're just going to put in a little wash. Just a simple little wash. You can just tap the outside of it. Same thing with the stem and the leaf. It becomes a little more sophisticated kind of painting and then you finish the center with a nice, let me grab a nice yellow. A little more sophisticated, right? Then your simple pen and ink. Some people think it's juvenile, but um, I say it's very, very cool. There's some famous watercolors from back in the day in the 1800s that did it this way. And just add some deeper color. And look, we've created this really kind of pretty. Gonna go add a little deeper color here. Sophisticated flower. Not everything has to be that way. So now, let's talk about composition, right? You got your flowers, you know how to draw a daisy, maybe draw the lily. How do you put it all together? That's another thing. So there are different varieties of that. So you could do a bouquet. So you have to figure out this particular bouquet. You see this is a bridal bouquet. They kind of have all similar shapes and size flowers. There's not one, one big flower. And it's still very pretty, right? And you have a lot of really ditzy kind of leaves here, sprays kind of out here. And the color is really beautiful. Um, so composition, you have to decide if you want to keep them all similar size. Let them back up. Or do you want to have them more interesting with maybe a few that are really big and then some smaller ones. So say we have this daisy here. I'm going to draw the simple oval. Kind of like a daisy slash mum. Right? And I have the little lines kind of going in here. Now I'm just doing this rough. By the way, try doing this rough. Draw like really goofy rough kind of squiggles like that. Right? You're just getting a feel for where you want flowers to go. And then I have in mind maybe I would put the, the lily kind of coming in here. Because that's a big flower. Those are big flowers. Right? And here's the stamen kind of pulling out here. And I've got that wiggle petal. And then the one that's coming here. A little short one here. And then the stamens are here. So now we got a lily and this kind of like mum kind of flower. And then I, I, I do a different flower up in here. You could do a poppy, maybe a rose, but let's just try kind of a poppy. So I try and do things in triangles is what I like to do. And it's a little more interesting. So here's a poppy. Okay, now you could fill this in with more flowers or put some leaves in here. And depending on how you want the composition to look, do you want it to look like a bouquet or you want it in a vase? So I'm thinking just kind of loose, just kind of throwing in the stems. Make sure they follow through. So you can always erase them over your flowers. But it'd be kind of stupid if you have this and then it's going over here, it makes no sense. It needs to follow through, All right? So I'm gonna put something over here. Maybe I'll do another poppy that you can't see, or a tulip, right? And then, again, follow the line where this goes. Can do a side daisy again. We're just roughing it in. And you can always change it. Maybe you would have another lily. I think I'm just going to keep to one. Or maybe I'll pull one up in here, actually. And have one just kind of like spraying on top of that flower. Have the stamens kind of here. Just kind of wiggle. Like it's kind of coming out of the... It's almost totally bloom. So that means... That's the bottom underneath part. And here are these... The leaves kind of folding over. 
could see some of that kind of some of that in here and, and here look at some pictures of um lilies on the internet now they usually have like a three prong stem like you can see this one has they're really kind of stiff they don't really bend one two three right so this one would have maybe another one coming off of it and this one too that's not opened we're getting interesting now we've got this poppy kind of in here maybe i'll throw another one kind of in here right and then i'm thinking that's going to come out this way and i'm going to put some leaves now the line out here simple leaves like you see in that bouquet so we just build the bouquet so it's a center composition we've got two this is like the biggest flower the um the lily and then we've got some smaller ones medium size and then we want some ditzy kind of flowers and we need something over in here it could be just open like this or you can add some more kind of crowding in so maybe i'll have another poppy kind of here and daisy like this one kind of wiggling here blanking it i'm just roughing it like i said before have that stem come through and then add some leaves right and then this lily right here add the stem for that and the one that's not opened and their leaves are just these kind of wiggle big leaves like that so then you have to go back in and erase these little lines so i like this it's kind of a center composition and then it's always good to add like i said little ditzy kind of flowers so here we have the stem coming through little branches it can be kind of bending downward and this is where you can do the little teeny four or five petal to see flowers kind of connecting to that branch so you want interest of like a medium flower a big flower little ditzy flowers and then you use the technique that i showed you how to make it more sophisticated so now this is all kind of rough you see this rough not so great if i just go and erase it with my kneaded eraser i can go right on top of it with my ink and make it look really cool so i have my rough i mean i probably pressed down a little too hard maybe you want to when you're doing your rough press it down much lighter so then you're going back in with your marker Remember, it can be rough also, and you can add in those little lines to get a little sophisticated, or not. Little poppy has the funky centers and those little things kind of sticking out of it, like fuzzies, I call them. You can follow through on this one, the lines kind of coming like this. See, now already it's feeling sophisticated, getting a little darker. By adding in more lines boom then we have this lily i'm really kind of going fast but see how when you just kind of go in after you erase your pencil it starts to get a little more sophisticated you can add those this is like the stargazing type, type of lily a line my head the stem coming here had a leaf from somewhere else follow through the stem and the one that wasn't open of the lily see now that you have your drawing you can go back in and fix all the things and again Start to use those techniques where you use the little lines. You can go like on the edge like this, right? Even with the center, get a little bit darker, crisscross it a little bit on the edge, just like this. See, I'm just making these little cross lines. 
on that lily. Get a little bit darker on the center and there's the stems. You can put the little dots if you want. Show that it's a stargazer. There's the stem for that. Got to follow through. Leaves. And then we have that funky, I want to say it's chrysanthemum kind of flower. Has a bunch of layering to it. Wiggle, wiggle for the center because <laughs> it's not exactly flat. We have some layered petals here. Like some shorter ones, some bigger ones in the back. It has many layers. Just like that. There's the stem. Follow through. Can add the leaf. See, and then you just kind of go in here and cross hatch. What do we mean by cross hatch? You do one line like this way and you crisscross it. And that helps it get darker. Cross hatch is that. Criss cross. And see how it got darker like that? Now I have a sunflower botanical drawing tutorial somewhere on my YouTube. You'd have to just type in the search bar. It's the same premise we did with the petals on the first two to here. And just go through and you'll create a really nice bouquet with all the tools that I just showed you. Start off with a big flower, start add in a triangle, another flower, and then try and build some triangles, and then you have this whole sophisticated looking botanical. And then of course add in some other elements besides flowers, like just some simple leaves like I'm doing here. Make it a little more interesting. We can put just a simple vein through it, but we're not going to be simple, are we? I'm going to get a little more sophisticated and add some little lines. You can hold your pen on that side. Then it doesn't seem like a simple kind of drawing. Here I'm going here with these little lines again. The poppy. Here with the center. And that's how you would create, you just keep building this composition. It will take time, right? Once you have to draw it, then you have to go and fill all the goodies. <laughs> the little stamens, they kind of look like a, it's like a brown stick. A little thing poking, and then you can just put your lilies, it's these wiggle kind of stars. Just wiggling away. And then of course, they come in like a three stem. So I have that stem here, and here's one here connecting, and this one out here. And these are the ones that are not open. And you can put a leaf in here. And again, a line in the center you can add little lines on the edges, a little more in the center, edges, center, maybe a little less in the foreground ones that are kind of coming at you. You get the picture. It slowly builds. And whenever you feel like there's a hole, start to draw it with the pencil first and then go in and fill it. And this is really loose because I'm trying to show you really quickly you know, how to create a nice botanical. But I think you guys are understanding how this works. So you have your flowers, draw your stem coming down, coming through. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense when you go to look at it. It doesn't look real. And you can know the axis of it going this way and that way on the left, on the right, where you can see some of the leaves, where you can't see some of the leaves. It's foreshortened right there. It's bending down. And there's the stem that I kind of follow through with. 
boom. If you don't have the follow through, it doesn't it doesn't look like it's normal and realistic. It looks kind of fake and goofy. And then just adding the lines, and here's that. I think it's turned into a tulip, but it's kind of like the sideways poppy. If I actually add some more lines. Skinny little lines kind of going like this, connecting. It will look more like a poppy. See, we're getting there. And I'm going to add some more ditzy little leaves here. Another trick for the stem, which is kind of sophisticated. You can do like the little lines, but you can do these little teeny little lines going just on one side like this. If you have the pen and ink. Pencil, you can just shade it in like I showed you. But if you're doing pen and ink, that's kind of how you do it. So pick a big flower or not. You can do small dissy flowers. I'm just going to follow through with this one and I'm going to go to another little composition. It's good to do little thumbnails. I talk about thumbnails a lot. To create I have many tutorials about thumbnails. Thumbnails are really great tools for you to figure out how you want your composition to look. Right? Once you figured out all your flowers, then you need to figure out there's the see that looks just really goofy by itself. But when you start to add those little lines, it gets more sophisticated. And you can do the crisscross. It doesn't become some kind of goofy little... Here's the little ditzy ones. Right? And that's how you do this. So, and of course that stem has to follow through. Going down. I just put some little small daisy down here. Little ditzy kind of thing, kind of bent. Like sad. Oh no, I'm dying. <laughs> but it's good. You gotta have some nice bent ones. Some nature. They're not all straight up. And do some little sprays too with just like some leaves. Here we go. I could just have some little leaf sprays. It makes it a little more interesting and exciting. You can have some sprays up in here. Remember the follow through. It doesn't all have to be flowers. See, there's our comp there's our composition. I almost said competition. <laughs> and then I would, if you're gonna do ink, by the way, another trip, trip, tick, trip, tip. <laughs> is to let it dry a couple seconds and then erase it because it will bleed, especially if you're using good paper. So now, what would you draw this on? I suggest you get um, Bristol Vellum uh, or it, it, Bristol Vellum comes in smooth or, I'm sorry, Bristol paper comes in vellum or smooth. You get the smooth if you don't want to paint or anything. Vellum has a little texture to it um, and then you can do that. And if you want to do other something like this on your watercolor paper and then just wash it in. So now I've waited a couple of seconds and I'm just going to go. And then you can just go ahead and add some color. I'm just doing some little squiggles. So again, the best tool for you when it's composition is to make these little things called some thumbnails. And thumbnails are just little squares. right to figure out in your mind how you want to do the actual picture do you just like draw in a goofy big flower and then want to have some spray ones just kind of going off like the flowers to the left with some leaves and then maybe a couple of little sprays so all the concentration is down in the center to the left that's one way of doing a composition over here you can do the center you can think about a bouquet and then you have your flowers. And you're just scribbling this in. This is just to give you a tool to figure out how you want the composition to look. Right? And maybe you want it in a vase on this one. Center vase. And then you're figuring out where's the big flower going to go. 
and then the little sprays and the same thing here or you just look at a bouquet that you have you just grab one from the store and just draw that right and here's the the table you can put uh, like fabric down stripes on the walls these are things you play with get a sketchbook like a really cheap sketchbook and start drawing little scribbles like this like doodads and then you can do like a real serious so here's the lily that's really big a really big lily it could just be all lilies and there is the ones that aren't bloomed so it's coming from the left the energy is like from here this one's all center this one's center this one's energy is going from the left to right right then you could do ones that are coming from the top down flowers that were like falling down so this is what you do you figure out how you want the composition to look and also I have my pencil flowers from the top and the bottom of the corners so they can be coming from the corner with little sprays just in one corner and vice versa or both corners this is what you see in invitations see you see it and then they write the writing in here so you can actually create your own imitation by painting your flowers if you have a computer and you can scan things in you can paint your flower bouquet right here and just cut it and write the writing in so there you go i hope this was helpful i'm learning how to draw and once you figure out the drawing you can go in like the same drawing we did for this you can go in and do if you have want to do watercolor you can add a little watercolor wash like i showed you and the shading and the pen and ink it's a lot of fun see how i let this dry now I can go in and erase all these little lines so it doesn't look so messy. Of course, there is something behind it underneath the paper so you don't really see how nice it looks. We'd have to take it apart. We have the one underneath it. So if we take this in there, now you don't see all the excess stuff. Then you have this nice drawing. And I might go back in and fill all this stuff in. But you, you want to do, if you're going to do ink, but you don't have to worry about this if you have pencil, if you want to just do the whole pencil look. But if you're going to do ink, give it, a, give it a minute or two. Right? And once you have all that done, you can kind of go in and tweak, add a little shading. I'm tweaking it by adding those little lines on the side of the stems. I don't want them to be goofy, just like one singular stem. I want them to have actual, you know, sophistication. So I'm just adding in some shading. And I'll take my time doing this. Add some more lines to this. And put in some shading. So it doesn't look juvenile. I wouldn't be my juvenile, just just like you know, not professional. You can go over that and crisscross those stems. It would create a shadow underneath some of these leaves, so it's gonna get darker. And there you go. And that is our tutorial. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it um, because everyone was asking about pen and ink, ink and wash, and drawing. So I showed you how to draw it. You can wash it in with watercolor and you don't have to wash in every single part of the flower. Really simple sections of it and look really pretty. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. Let me know if this was helpful to you um, or if it wasn't helpful or still confusing. I'd love to hear it. So it's just kind of how I go about creating like a botanical or something like this. I look at the flowers, you know, you don't want to don't want to get like a print out something like this and then just trace it. You want to look at it and see how the shape is. It's they're like stars. And the more you do that, just buy bouquets and like, you know, buy some cheap bouquets in some of the stores too. Look at the flowers, see how they're bending, see how the leaves are going, study them, study them. 
I know it may seem like, oh, I can't draw. But the more you try it, the better you'll get. And the better you get at drawing an actual living, breathing flower that you see in front of you, then you can go out into the world when it's nice and, well, right now it's winter here, but when it's nice, and you can draw some flowers that you have in your yard, make a bouquet, and you can create your own beautiful pictures. And that's 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 just the trick on how to do it. In, and once you get really good at drawing particular flowers, you don't even need to have to look at a photograph. You know, you can just kind of like, I've been drawing like these poppies and this kind of daisies for a lifetime. And you just kind of figure out how you want your design to look. And you can put it in a vase and not put it in a vase. You can add more stems, whatever. Follow through with that line. I'm going to add a little more doodad leaves. And just keep playing. I can add some more leaves back in here, kind of going out. It needs to have some more stuff in here. It looks a little thin. Add some lines. Again, you just keep playing and adding. Have fun. So you do the whole thing in pencil if you want to do the ink part. And then you come back in and do the ink. And do all those things I showed you to make it look a little more sophisticated instead of juvenile. So thank you guys for being a great supporters on my YouTube channel. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And uh, just listen, just get out and sketch those little doodles. That little doodle thumbnail is just fun to do. And then when you get really better at drawing the flowers, you can, the thumbnails can get a little more sophisticated to figure out what you want to do. And then you go full tilt on a picture like this. It's going to really help you in your creativity and your painting and everything. All right, take care, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.